So you've been planning your trip to the Philippines. You're all excited and you've got your gift for this person you've been talking to online and you, you, you're thinking this is the one and you're on the plane, you can't stop thinking about what's she going to be like, what's this, what's that. You get through immigration and customs, you text on your phone, I'm here and no response. Uh, text again no response then you get a phone call from some uncle or aunt or whatever and turns around and says well Maxine is actually Max it's the woman you fall in love with is a guy now the first thing I say there is always telltale signs um, the way gay dress is far far more liberal than the average Filipino woman. If a Filipino woman dresses the way some of the gays do, it's because they work in the night trades. Filipino women are generally conservative. They, they don't show too much leg or anything else. They're quite conservative about their dress sense, because especially in their own communities, because everyone looks at you. They're very judgmental within their own communities. So... Being excessively expressive is extremely noticed in no time. So they just don't do it. Next thing is, if that does happen to you, don't sit there in a pool of tears and like hate everything around you. You're there, right? You're there. You've still got gifts. Don't have to give it to Max. <laughs> um, I would personally just say, thanks for wasting my time and just ditch, ditch the person. On the spot, just cut it dry and move on. Getting a taxi, get to a shopping mall or something. You've already got your hotel and everything booked. There is plenty of women around. I mean, there is no shortage of women. Okay, you may struggle to meet the uh, woman of your dreams on your first trip to the Philippines. But it doesn't matter. The main thing is you're there. You, you've got to experience the Philippines. You get to meet lots of people. And because you've had one bad experience, don't let it ruin everything else. You've already spent the money on the flight. You've already spent the money in the hotel. Because that guy, girl, is um, not what you expected, it doesn't matter. And I know some people say, oh, it's easy for you to say. It's, if you're going to sit there and expect to find a solution in this where you're a straight guy and you're not happy about this but expecting some miracle to turn this guy into a girl... It ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen. Unless you're actually very open-minded and whatever, <laughs> you are not going to find a solution that is going to be happy for you. So that's what I'm saying. Ditch the phone number, ditch them, gone. Straight to the shopping malls. Get, you know, get your stuff offloaded at the hotel. Chat to the people at the hotel. Chat to everybody. Um, because the more people you meet, the more likely you are to meet somebody that you're going to hit it off with. And you, I mean, the funny thing is, in the Philippines, you could tell that to somebody um, about meeting this gay guy sort of thing, and they would, wouldn't would be that um, surprised, let's put it that way. They'll, they'll actually have a bit of sympathy for you, and they'll say, oh, well, my sister's actually single. Now, it sort of coincides with something that's happened with a Marine that murdered a transsexual um, well, transgender in the Philippines, and there's this whole political thing. The guy did it. He, I mean, at the end of the day, he murdered a person. I don't care what anybody says. It, were they leading them on? It's irrelevant. Murder's murder. You can't justify it by whatever, you know. And I know from friends in the Navy that have had similar experiences in Cyprus and whatever, they don't let it ruin their night. I mean, there was a funny story about... Um, one of the guys I was working with in a man, he was talking about when he joined the Navy. So he's actually meeting, this is his first assignment offshore. So they're, they've actually gone to Cyprus and they're in a nightclub, dancing away, and he hits it off with this woman. And he's, he's like, oh yeah, I'm in here, I'm in here. And obviously everyone else in the building knows the joke because he's the new guy they, they've set him up for this so that guy is that girl is a guy um but my friend's there and he's hitting it off and slips a hand somewhere he shouldn't do and he's like that doesn't feel right <laughs> and then like you know 
<laughs> you can imagine the expression on his face. But when he went back to the barracks, the all the guys was going, oh, how, how did you get on last night? I seen you with that girl. And they were like, oh, yeah, I had a great time, great time. And it, it's like, you're a liar because we know that this, you know, it's, it's the thing to do for, for new recruits. It's just a bit of humor, you know. I, you know, it's just the sort of things uh, squaddies now get up to. But the whole point here is don't let it um, ruin your trip. And like I say, that the whole incident with that marine, etc., um, I'm pushing that to one side because I can get in a whole debate on that. But the, the whole point here is you can move on. You know, people go on about all the Filipino face, etc., what and you didn't lose face when somebody did that to you you know yeah everybody has some face in some form it's a bit of pride you just go okay how hell move on find somebody else and here's another important factor that is a bit of pre-planning before you come to the philippines do not tell people who you're going to meet because nine times out of ten the people that people meet isn't the person they originally were talking to online because they find other connections with other people once they get to the country which is why sometimes you, you'll see a lot of people say just go to the philippines and then make a decision once you get there because women will be approaching you all the time i mean i've said to you before but it would like sitting at a mall people will approach you but the same thing happens if you're talking to the security guard, he, he'll know somebody that is available and he'll know their entire back, back uh, life and they'll tell you all the information you want to know. The, the ones in the, you know, that generally will approach you without a second thought, I personally wouldn't advise going with any of those women. But if a guy you're talking to says, well, my niece is actually looking for a husband, blah, blah, blah. Well, you just say, well, I'm not looking to get married. I mean, I've only just come here on holiday, but I'm willing to meet people. Then you've left the door open at the same time with no commitments there. So you, you may hit it off with somebody and it's a whole new, whole new, um, whole new trip. Because you already pre-planned stuff with this person and they turned out to be something they weren't. But there's nothing stopping you enjoying your holiday. And that's why you just need to go, you know what? I don't care what's going on. Okay, that was a bad mistake. I'm not going to dwell on it. It's happened to a thousands, thousands, not a thousand, thousands of ex um, guys that have gone to the Philippines. The whole ladyboy thing is it's a complex one. I don't really understand it. I've got no, like I say, I've got no interest in uh, lady boys as such at all um, not from a sexual preference anyway <laughs> I, I, they're, they're great in call centres they're fantastic in call centres because they can play both ways when it comes to communication so they're quite good at de uh, deflaming situations as well uh, purely because of their sexuality but at the same time they're good salespeople. Uh, so from that point of view, they're good at making money for me. So I don't begrudge them making me money. But the the issues relating to some of them um, meeting these guys, I think a lot of the time they don't actually mean to cause any harm. Um, they're not expecting a relationship to develop. They're used to people like shunning them. So they're not really going to be going, oh... Yeah, when he comes over, we're going to go and do this. Because the first thing their friends are going to say is, what are you doing? Why have you invited the guy over? Does he know you're a guy? You know, he's like, ah, right. You know, I'll, I'm going to show you. What's the next video after this? Because you'll find it quite funny. Um, thanks for watching.